Pluto, that little planet way out there, used to be one of the main planets. But then some smart folks like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku said, hold on a sec. Now, they're saying Pluto might actually crash into Neptune. So, how could that even happen, and what would it mean? Is this some weird space thing, or is there more to it? Let's look at what might happen if Pluto and Neptune smash together. Even though Pluto's not a full-size planet anymore, people are still super interested in it. Experts have noticed that Pluto's path around the Sun gets pretty close to Neptune's. Tyson and Kaku are worried that these two could hit each other, which might cause problems even here on Earth. But how is that possible? Pluto's trip around the Sun is different from the other planets. It takes a crazy 248 years to go around just once. Since we found it in 1930, it hasn't even finished one trip. Plus, Pluto's path isn't a regular circle like the other planets, it's more of an oval. And it's tilted, too, at a weird angle compared to the main plane of the solar system. Here's the crazy part, for about 20 years of its orbit, Pluto gets closer to the Sun than Neptune does. So, why haven't they crashed yet? Well, the gravity from other planets is doing some work. When Pluto was first spotted, scientists began trying to figure out its weird path. It's not flat like the other planets, and it's shaped oddly. And yeah, it crosses Neptune's path. But, somehow, Pluto's orbit stays steady. That shows how complicated space stuff can be. Think of it like this, you've got Pluto, Neptune, and the Sun, and they're all pulling on each other. It's hard to guess where they'll end up. This three-body problem shows how everything works together. Astrophysicists believe that what keeps planets apart is something called non-synchronous vibration. With Pluto and Neptune, it means that when Pluto crosses Neptune's path, it's always far away from Neptune itself. Plus, Pluto moves up and down in its orbit, so when it's close to Neptune, it's high above Neptune's path. Safe! There's also something called the VZK oscillation. It's named after some scientists who studied how things move in space when they're pulling on each other with gravity. This helps keep Pluto's orbit from getting too wild. So basically, even though Pluto's path seems all over the place, these things keep it stable. It won't crash into Neptune or go flying off. Understanding this three-body problem helps us learn about Pluto, our solar system, and even planets around other stars. Back in the 80s, some computer models seemed to show that Pluto's orbit was unstable, and small changes could make a big difference after a long time. But later studies showed that Pluto's path actually stays pretty stable over billions of years. Scientists have used computers to see how big planets like Neptune and Jupiter affect Pluto's path. Neptune and Pluto have a special relationship, for every two trips Pluto makes around the Sun, Neptune makes three. Plus, Jupiter's gravity helps keep Pluto steady. Saturn helps too. Maybe these planets are working together to keep Pluto safe. These things are important for keeping our solar system in order. Without them, stuff could crash or get thrown out of orbit. Understanding Pluto's orbit is super important, especially with people talking about it maybe hitting Neptune. It helps us get a better sense of how our solar system is always moving and changing. Pluto's story shows that even wild orbits can find a way to stay in balance because of gravity and other stuff. It's also a good reminder that we need to keep watching and studying space to learn more. When we study space, we often learn about stuff that seems weird. Pluto's orbit is a great example of how crazy things can get. Even small changes in where Pluto is or how fast it's moving can mess up its orbit in the long run. Scientists use computers to try and figure out how Pluto moves. They can change small things in the computer and see what happens to Pluto's path. These models showed that even with all the things that keep it stable, Pluto's orbit can still be a little wild. But even with that, it stays stable over billions of years. So, Pluto's trip around the Sun has some kind of order to it, even if it doesn't look like it. It's hard to guess what will happen in space, especially with wild orbits like Pluto's. Even our best models can only do so much. They depend on knowing exactly where things are to start with, and any mistake can throw things off. The wild nature of these orbits reminds us that the universe is always changing. We've learned a lot, but Pluto's story shows how much we still don't know. 
Understanding how the big planets affect Pluto's orbit helps us understand how the whole solar system works. It shows how each planet can change the path of other planets. So, why are some experts worried about Pluto and Neptune crashing? Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is famous for talking about space stuff, has some interesting thoughts on Pluto. He's known for changing Pluto from a planet to a dwarf planet. Tyson says that we changed Pluto's name because we're always learning new things. He sees the crazy orbits like Pluto's as a sign of how much there is still to learn. That's what makes space so cool. His worries about Pluto possibly hitting Neptune suggest that we might still be missing something. Will they crash, or is this just another crazy moment in space? Only time will tell. For now, it makes us wonder how much we still don't know about our own solar system. We keep studying because we want to learn more about the mysteries out there. The idea of Pluto and Neptune crashing raises some interesting questions about the solar system. It makes us rethink how stable planets really are. It's kind of scary and exciting to think that two things so different could hit each other, especially since their orbits seem pretty safe right now. Pluto's way out there, and Neptune is a huge gas planet with strong gravity. If they did crash, it would change how we understand gravity and how planets change over time. To understand what might happen, we need to think about what Pluto and Neptune are made of. Pluto is icy and cold, with nitrogen ice on its surface and a thin atmosphere. Neptune is mostly hydrogen and helium, with a thick atmosphere. A crash would really mess them up and could create a big show in space. Other planets also play a role. Neptune's gravity is important for keeping Pluto's orbit steady, but it's not the only thing. Jupiter, the biggest planet, also helps keep Pluto from wandering too close to Neptune. Saturn adds to the mix, too. So, it's not very likely that Pluto and Neptune will actually crash. So, Pluto's that tiny, distant planet that used to be one of the main planets, until astrophysicists like Neil deGrasse Tyson said, hold on a sec. Now, Tyson and others are saying there's a chance Pluto might crash into Neptune. How could that even happen, and what would it mean? Is this some weird space thing, or is there more to the story? Let's check out what might happen if Pluto and Neptune actually collided. Pluto is interesting, even though it's now a dwarf planet, experts are still watching it closely. They've noticed Pluto's path around the Sun gets awfully close to Neptune's. Tyson and other scientists like Michoku are worried these two could hit each other, which sounds pretty bad for Earth, right? How could that tiny Pluto ever hit big Neptune? Well, Pluto's trip around the Sun is different. It takes 248 years to make one orbit. Ever since they found it in 1930, it hasn't even gone around the Sun once. Plus, its path isn't a circle like other planets, it's more of an oval. And it's tilted, too, at a weird angle. What's really wild is that for about 20 years of its orbit, Pluto is closer to the Sun than Neptune. So why haven't they crashed yet? Other planets' gravity keeps them apart. People started studying Pluto's orbit right after it was spotted. It was clear it was different from other planets. It crosses Neptune's path. But it's stable. This is how Pluto, Neptune, and the Sun move and pull on each other. This shows how Pluto's orbit, Neptune's orbit, and the Sun's gravity all affect things. The scientists say what stops planets from crashing is how they move. Pluto and Neptune stay away from each other. Also, Pluto moves up and down, so when it's close to Neptune, it's higher up, not in the way. The gravity helps keep it moving smoothly. All these things mean Pluto's orbit is steady. Seems like even though space can be crazy. This helps us learn more about Pluto, our solar system, and other worlds. Back in the 80s, computer models showed Pluto's orbit isn't really that stable. Small changes could make a big difference over time. But these odd things about Pluto's orbit actually keep it steady for a long, long time. Regular checks have helped us understand how Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn affect Pluto's path. Neptune and Pluto have a special connection. For every two times Pluto goes around the Sun, Neptune goes around three times. This helps keep Pluto stable. Jupiter's gravity also helps a lot, and Saturn too. So, it seems like these planets work together to keep Pluto from bumping into things. 
If things weren't like this, our solar system would be a mess. Planets would crash or get thrown out of orbit. That's why understanding Pluto's orbit is so important, especially with people talking about it crashing into Neptune. It shows how the solar system is always changing. Really, Pluto shows how even weird orbits can be stable thanks to gravity and how planets move. It also shows we need to keep watching and learning about these things to understand our place in the universe. The more we explore space, the weirder things get. Pluto's wild orbit shows that just a little change in where it starts can change its orbit in the long run. Even with all of this, Pluto's orbit stays pretty consistent over millions of years. Even though Pluto's orbit seems pretty crazy, it has some kind of order. It's hard to guess what happens in space, because things can change so quickly. Models help us understand space, but they can't predict everything. It reminds us that we still have a lot to learn about the universe. The gravity of the big planets affects Pluto's orbit, an understanding that helps us understand the solar system. So, why are scientists suddenly worried about Pluto hitting Neptune? Neil deGrasse Tyson has some thoughts on that. He is famous for calling Pluto a dwarf planet. Tyson helps us see that space is always changing, and people are paying more attention to these forgotten parts of space. Tyson thinks that calling Pluto a dwarf planet isn't a bad thing. He views the complexities as a sign of how much there is still to learn. But Tyson's worries about Pluto and Neptune show there might be something else we haven't figured out yet. Will they crash? Or is this just another mystery in space? Only time will tell. For now, we're still curious about how little we know about our own solar system. The potential crash between Pluto and Neptune brings up cool questions about how the solar system works. It makes us rethink what we know about how planets stay in place. It's weird and interesting that these two very different planets could hit each other. Pluto is way out there, and Neptune is huge. If they did collide, it would be huge news. Pluto is frozen and has nitrogen ice. Neptune is gas. A crash between these two would change them a lot and be seen from super far away. Neptune's gravity keeps Pluto steady, but it's not the only thing. Jupiter helps. It helps keep Pluto from wandering into Neptune's area. Saturn helps too. All of this makes a crash between Pluto and Neptune unlikely.